All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another live stream for Pepperstone. Today, we're covering scalping secrets, how to find your edge and realistically understand how markets and big institutions actually really place their positions. So I'm pretty excited to get started today because Tyron and I like this topic a lot. I think it's got some great informational tools in it. And more importantly, we'll be deep diving into really understanding market positions because it's easy to press a button to get in on scalping, isn't it, Tyron? But it's much harder to figure out where is your take profit going to be and more importantly, where should your stop losses be? So today we'll be talking about also extreme levels and how markets tend to interact with those zones and how that can help us as a, as a scalper or a day trader. Absolutely. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, look, it is one of our favorite topics. I know it's very popular amongst you traders as well. So hopefully you'll get some good benefit. And yeah, we're going to have a look at some live markets as well. So we can certainly put what we're teaching you uh, into practice as well to see how it actually plays out in the markets that are currently happening at the moment. So looking yeah, forward absolutely. to it. Absolutely. Absolutely, Ty. So basically what we'll be covering, we'll be understanding how these big institutions enter and exit market positions. We're we'll looking at setting take profit levels a little bit better and stop losses using more market adaptive concepts. Sometimes people in scalping get caught into, I'm going to have a three pip stop loss, 10 pip stop loss, 20 pip stop loss. Having fixed arbitrary numbers probably isn't the best way moving forward. And then of course, we'll be using a liquidity concept around markets. So first off, let's begin by discussing the idea of how banks actually or anybody actually builds a position because, of course, they don't really scalp or day trade, do they? Instead, what they do is they build a position over time and they basically leverage up and leverage down that position. So think of it as they add additional orders or they, re they reduce additional orders. And most of that happens, let's be frank, on the daily, on the weekly, and on the monthly. So that's how it happens, whether it's FX, whether it's stocks, whether it's anything really. That, that's how you build a position. You know, if you were managing a lot of money, billions of dollars, let's say, you're not going to enter all of it, nor can you enter all of it in one position, can you, Ty? It's just not possible. Uh, absolutely not. Um, and, you know, and you wouldn't want to anyway, really, because, uh, yeah, that's going to upset the market in a way that is not always going to be in your favor. So it's definitely a scale in approach. And, uh, and I think it's important to understand this, what we're teaching you, but it's also very important to understand the agility that we have actually as um, you know, retail traders, that we can move in and out of the markets very quickly. So I think it's important to understand how the big boys do it, but it's also just as important to understand that we don't have that problem and we can actually you know, get in and out very, very quickly. So let's put this in the context of a currency. A lot of you guys like trading currencies. Obviously, you could use S&P, stocks, doesn't really matter for this concept. And what we'll do is we'll put a price in mind. So let's say we use Australian US dollar and we'll select 70 cents as a base marker. So basically, what will happen is we've got 70 cents and then we could say, okay, we've got 71 cents and we've got 72 cents. Now, this is a very broad 200 pip range, but basically the way that markets might position or big traders may position is they might decide that they believe between 70 cents and 72 cents, the Australian dollar is cheap compared to the US dollar. And they believe they should be building a position at that level. As the market comes down through that position, what effectively is occurring is they begin their buying process. As it becomes cheaper and cheaper into their range, they get more and more excited about it. So I have some questions for the community here. And the first question would be, how could we potentially see their excitement visualized at between 70 and 71 cents? If it comes down to 70 cents, how could we see that potentially visualized on a smaller timeframe chart? Let's say we believe that they're very excited about the price of 70 cents, but they begin purchasing at 72 and 71 in smaller quantities. How would that represent on the price? As we get that in answer, what generally will then start to happen is we'll start to get what they call a build of a position. And the position may start to look like this. Now, a few of you may be aware of that as being a Wyckoff accumulation at this point, if it does end up breaking to the upside. And what that is, is basically a slow build of a position. Now, as a scalper, it's important to be able to visualize this, but more importantly, you're a scalper. You want to be able to take advantage of the moves that happen within this build. So how do you find the key levels? Well, we'll be using an indicator or a tool at least that you can use with your TradingView platform, which of course you can get through Pepperstone. And it's, it's a great tool to additionally add extra information, I believe is an advanced technique for traders out there. 
Just while we're waiting for that answer, Ty, I'm just going to run the quick disclaimer. Obviously, I want to make sure all of you guys are aware that today is educational purposes. So we'll see you in just a few seconds. All right. So the answer is a few people are saying consolidation. The answer would be probably some form of you know, excitement. So that would be a wick. So you'd be looking for wicks at these lows and they could be in the form of candles. They could be in the form of just giant wicks with giant bodies on them and all sorts of things. Now, another advanced technique when it comes to thinking about wicks is think of wicks as excited orders. Effectively, they are positions in the market where something has moved very quickly, aren't they, Tyrone? It's very excited market could be an yep. algorithm getting in there they like that price something's happened there isn't it it does and people actually it's funny you know because people are scared of wicks and they say oh you can't actually trade um a, a wiki market but actually you might be surprised at how much information you can actually derive from markets that are actually doing a lot of wicking action because it is actually telling us something and it's right it is an excited market and um but it's also an uncertain market but it does tell us a lot about the actual position uh, of where the market is and the levels and really where we need to get in and out. So, yeah, most definitely. Uh, that's a really good example. <laughs> if, we're, if we're thinking about the way that markets will interact, if we then consider, of course, let's, in this case, let's just go from the bottom up, say this was 70 cents, this was 71, and this was 72. So 72, we'll just go 71 and 70. So if we think that is the price, or it doesn't matter what price it was, if it interacts with that zone and has a strong rejection, that is a quick, weak rejection, we can assume that the algorithms that the big banks have and those entry tools are actually very excited about getting into that zone. There's effectively not enough liquidity, not enough literal orders in the system for them to get potentially filled the way they want to. So they all jump in at once and they push price down. So wicks, let's consider that they hold orders. And let's also now consider that whenever you're thinking about any range in a market, that range is very scalpable. But more importantly, we need to think of it as building a position. Now, how can we find where the big banks actually hold a position? Well, the, the truth is there is a way. And one of those ways is by recognizing supply and demand zones and many people would know them in price action as channels. And to think about these zones in terms of where orders have been placed. Now, there's an indication for this. And what we'll do is we'll get back to him in a second. But the indication that I want to talk about is volume profile. So has anyone here heard of volume profiles before? I'm sure quite a few of you are becoming aware of this. It's a tool that is rel relatively new. But one of the things that I like so much about volume profiles is obviously it takes that next level to bringing price and volume together. Now, historically, of course, if we think about volume profiles, they've always been like this. So you've seen volume down the bottom represented like this on a chart. Now, the problem with that is, yes, you might have known how much volume was going through on that particular hour or that particular day or that particular four-hour period. However, you wouldn't know where it was placed on the chart. Where actually are the orders going through? Yes, there's a lot of volume, but does that tell you a price? Well, unfortunately, it didn't. But nowadays, some of these tools, some of these trading platforms actually offer you volume profile, or at least you can get them as an extra additional. So this is where we get into what we call volume profile areas. And it's really interesting because, of course, you have three main things that come up on this. Now, if you add it within TradingView, I'll show you how I've got it set up so that you can have a bit of a look at it. But basically, you usually get three bits of information. You get what we call the value area, which is the price range in which 70% of the total volume was traded. So that becomes represented by an area which we'll look at soon. So remember this number, 70%. As stock standard, like a lot of indicators, Ty, you don't want to change the wording on a lot of these, do you? No, no absolutely <laughs> we not. always We always want to leave it as, as pretty much average. Like with MACD, do you make a change to the MT4 MACD? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. Thomas and I explored every single number imaginable on the MACD to see if there was any better ones um, mm -hmm. over many years, and there isn't. Yeah, there's, there's just... It's just, it's just, no, we tried, it's we did try. Yeah, no, we, we tried, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not easy. And um, the, the tried and true uh, will work the best for you. 
Yeah. So the next thing is, of course, then we have the value area highs, which is the VAH. This is the highest area that the price is traded within that 70% area. So that'll be depicted by a line. Then we have the low value area, which is the VAL. So the value area low, and that's the lowest price in 70% of the area. So it's usually depicted by this line. And then we get what we call the point of control, which generally shows up as a middling line. This is the single price level where the most amount of volume was traded for the area and it represents the area's most open trading positions. So think of that as it could be down here, it could be in the middle, and it could be up here. It could be anywhere, but it'll be represented in that price. Now, what that helps us to do is think about what we just said before. A bigger bank or institution is going to build a position based on their analysis and their thought process of averaging in so they can get their billions of dollars in. When they're purchasing or selling a particular asset class, let's in this case call it a currency, they're going to want to particularly buy one zone. And this particular indicator can show us that. So why do we leave it at 70%? Well, it's got to do with normal distribution theory. Realistically, normal distribution theory is like everything in life, Ty. I actually learned uh, a new word that some people might want to think about, which is called the Pareto principle, which is we know it as the 80-20 rule. And the 80-20 rule is, is oh, it's a great concept, Ty, because what it what is actually very, very unique in terms of it, it works a lot of the time. It's all about understanding that it, it, even as a professional trader, your, your job is to basically take as much information in as possible, but then omit a huge amount of it and focus on the 20% that actually makes a difference to give you statistical advantage. So it's the same kind of thing here when we're talking about normal distribution theory. We're always going to be using this 70% in options. It looks the same way. You get a bell curve in options as well when you're looking at the options market and you have those one standard deviations on each side, two standard deviations, et cetera, which hold price, which is pretty important. So 68.26 is normal distribution theory. Therefore, don't change your indicator. Leave it at 70. Let's actually jump into the charts here, Ty, and I want to load up. I've loaded the Australian dollar. And we'll remove this line. I was just doing some testing on it. So obviously, massive fall off on the Australian dollar in recent days. But what if you were in this range? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a fixed range volume profile, and I'll actually put it on this chart. And I'll begin it over here just to show you how it starts off. So the market obviously comes down fairly aggressively, creates some type of low, then rallies up a little bit, and then drops down. Now, what I'm using here is I'm using the fixed, like basically a fixed range volume profile. Some people have visible screen volume profile, not my preferred. And then there's another one we'll talk about in just a second. So we've ascertained that this particular red line here, and I'll show you my settings for this so you can have a look. So these are the settings. If we go over here, you've got value area high, value area low, and POC selected. Color wise, I don't care. And then of course, I like to have like a red line for the POC. It doesn't matter which color you prefer. You can change it all. It's pretty nice like that. So if we look at this particular indicator, what you might notice is that the market was trading lower, sure, but that certainly wasn't within 70% of the overall volume. I've pulled it from here over to here. So where was the level that was the most traded by, let's call it, the big banks and institutions, Tyrone? that red line there, isn't it? So Absolutely. as a scalper or day trader, as the market comes back, because we know it's in a downward trend, as the market comes back to that price, could that be an area of interest for us to instigate our scalping system for the day? What do you think? I'm thinking it's a pretty good chance. It's a pretty good chance, yeah. <laughs> we know they positioned in that level. And we also know that it's going to be one of those zones, even though conventionally you're looking at the highs and lows with support resistance theory, this is going to be one of the most traded zones. So if you're, let's say, buying down here, where could a great take profit be? A la this level here could be a very, very nice level. So you can see how it gets quite powerful, especially in compressed markets. And you know the great thing about compressed markets is that pretty much, I would say, seven to eight months of the year, we're actually mostly range bound. We only tend to go into trends when we break things due to news. And then we move to what I like to call the next level of equilibrium, which is often just basically the next level of supply or demand, isn't it, Ty? That, that, that yeah. next structural zone where market orders have been in the past. So yeah. here we have a great example of a zone that we could target. 
but it gets a little bit better than this. Let's pull this volume area, so the volume profile, across this price. And as we pull it across the price, do you see that this level is still the most traded zone? So here's the, here's the line that I'm going to pop in. So this is still the most traded volume area of the entire range so far. We're still stuck within most of the range being in here. So if we're selling the highs and buying the lows, where could a take profit be? In general, this middling volume profile area would be pretty good because that's where we know the composite man or the bigger traders are actually placing positions. So it could be a very good take profit zone and it could also potentially offer opportunities for buys and sells. Here's some testing from the top down to that level. Remember, we know that level as of this area structure. So imagine if you had a trading system, you're looking at it coming into a London or New York open, it hits those zones. Could that be a good zone for you to then use your moving averages and your stochastic indicators, your MACD and whatever else you have for your scalping system? Absolutely, it could be. So it lets you build a bit of an idea of where banks and institutions actually activate orders. And what you might find surprising is as I pull this across this level, so let's continue to pull it across, you might notice that the, basically the, the point of control that is the main traded zone remains very stable through this level. So it consistently is one of the most, it is the most traded zone consistently. And notice the difference between the value area low and the POC. They're both sitting so close together, Ty. And that shows you that a huge amount of this 70% distribution is stuck within this, this range here. So again, extreme highs and extreme lows. If you're in at those levels, excellent take profit zones in here, excellent reaction zones off these zone, of this area as well. And yeah, it really helps you define, I believe, a range. So what do you think about yeah. that one, Ty? I love, I love yeah. to see this type of stuff in action. Oh, it's amazing, actually. And, and look, the thing is, too, I know, I know uh, you mentioned it earlier, but the, the market, you know, for the most part, it is said to be only trending 30% of the time. And yeah, 70% of the time, you're going to find yourself in sideways markets. Now, look, mm -hmm. the truth is anybody can trade a trending market, right? Any any genius can jump in, uh, trade the pullback and just go in the direction of the trend, right? There's no great secret there. They're the easiest markets to trade. But to be a successful and professional trader, to actually be able to trade any market, you must understand how to trade these sideways markets because there is an extraordinary opportunity to get in and out of positions very, very frequently and accurately. And by using this method, as you can see, you know, understanding where the real volume is, is not only giving you entry points, but it's also giving you exit points. And they're the two things that are the most important when you are actually trading on a very short term level, like day trading or scalping. It's really, really important to understand this. And as much as it sounds uh, probably very complicated, yeah, Tom's actually made it look very, very simple there by just literally bringing up those two zones. And yeah, although the the high and the low of those whole of the whole area is important, the real area you need to be focusing on is where your actually entry and exit points are going to be. Yeah, and and we know where the extreme zones are as well yeah. because we can see the distribution. So we can see thirty percent of well, where seventy percent of all the trades and volume have actually gone through. Because remember, just because a price has hit these points, isn't it, Ty? Doesn't mean a lot of volume went through at those. No, points. not at all. Quite people quite sometimes often, that's think. The lowest. That's generally the lowest volume. Uh, like when you see, yeah. when you see a big giant wick, uh, like a big big reaction, mm -hmm. the very bottom mm -hmm. of that wick is actually where the least amount of price action is. That's where the orders have dried up. There's no more orders there. That's why it reverses. So it, it makes a perfect sense that yeah, you know, where the real action is is where the majority yeah. of the orders are. So the extreme zones are not going to be the heaviest traded zones. That's never going to be the case. Otherwise, they wouldn't be an extreme zone. And we could define it using this indicator. So that's why we call it like a bit of an advanced technique. By the way, if you do enjoy these streams, guys, and you like what Pepperstone's bringing you and you like this type of stuff, remember to smash that like button. Uh, Ty and I would always really appreciate that. I've got a little bit of a quiz here for the chat as well, and I think it's always a great quiz to have. Here's a question for you. Which one of these candles holds the most amount of volume? Now, of course, that's all I'm going to give you. Which candle holds the most, most amount of volume? The big one or the smaller one? Let's see if anyone can can get an answer. And yes, it is a trick. <laughs> so let's move over to continuing to think about this process. So of course, if we have here, I'll call this one A, by the way, and this one B, so you can do it in the chat a little bit easier then. So we have here the volume profile over the top. 
Now, as a scalper, you might say, okay, that's great. Well, I can see the range. I can see the most traded zone, uh, but it's not always going to be there. And I might want to be in and out a little bit faster. Well, there's actually extra tools that have been activated in here. And this is one of the ones that I quite like here is session volume profiles. So what that does is it actually takes, we're on a 15 minute chart here. It actually takes the previous session and draws a volume profile over the top of it. That now, is how so can that be helpful? Sexy. I have no, never Tyron seen likes that. That, that one. I know, so I know, yeah, I know you haven't. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I use it a little bit, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, that mm. is so cool. Yeah. So this this particularly shows us the most traded zone for that previous session. Now, what will often happen is if you know like pivots, let's say we use pivots as a as a technique in scalping, which which by the way, we love pivots. Pivots are pretty good we could then start to build a confluence story of, of key levels. But imagine if you come into a session and you know where the most traded level was before. You come into a London or New York open and it's, let's say, at an extreme zone that you've defined on a chart. So what the problem with that is, is that you, well, you could come and look at it, you're at an extreme zone and you could say, well, I believe it's going to go touch the previous traded level the tr previous most traded level, because we know that that's where the market was placing the most amount of orders. It might want to go back there and then possibly sell off or buy off that zone. And you'll often find that markets will come back during the next session. So here's the previous session. You can see it comes back into that zone. Here's the previous session. This is the new session. And then it comes back into that zone. It may not hit it perfectly, but it can be an extra little area for you to make some reactions off. So I really like it and it, it it can be an additional that you add on there. I specifically like, you know, really understanding the most traded level, but but overall this is this is an extra little good thing for scalpers to build your system around. Now, the question was, is it B or is it A? Uh, Trish said because it's a trick, it it must be B. Well, the answer is actually the trick is even better than that. It was you can't tell just from looking at the candle. And that's the problem you know, a lot of people have. They assume that a giant candle means a lot of orders. If, for lack of a better term, let's say I had a Rolex watch. It's a rare Rolex watch, yeah? It's a good, good time to be probably in that type of field. And I put my one up. There's no other ones in the world. The last sell price is $100,000. And then I sell it for $800,000. In a candle form, that would look like a $700,000 candle because it would go from the last trade to the new trade and it would show this giant big green wick. Does that mean there's a lot of trade that's gone on in between it? Absolutely not. It's just there weren't, there was just no, there was a lot of demand and there was no one willing to sell. It's the same thing in the markets. We can't assume that every day that's a giant candle has a huge amount of volume on it. It tends to, but it doesn't necessarily have to. So, Today's essence was, well, we wanted to really hit this out with the volume profiles and how we could potentially build that storyline. Now, we've seen some pretty recent large moves. Obviously, we've seen here the euro. And I wanted to bring the euro on just to prove to you that what we've been talking about recently with supply and demand, obviously supply up here, which is this red box, very clear to me. If we attached a volume profile to this, and let's do a volume profile of the current downward trend that's happened here. What you might notice is that when we actually take the high to the low and we don't include the previous day of trade, what we'll get is we'll get up here. When we trade, when we take the range that was above here down, we still get the same level, which is good. And then when we take this most recent swing, we start to build more of this downward slope side. So what I like to do is I like to play with the volume profiles through the ranges. And what you tend to find is that markets, especially if they're at the extreme under lows, because remember through this trade to this trade range here, all of this is not actually much trade volume. The market will often like to come back to the POC. And the POC of this range sits around this level. So that tends to be a zone where you could be starting to take profit and you could, of course, start to look for shorts as well. And that's why the market you know, was hanging around in this zone and a lot of the reason why it ended up shorting off. Yeah. That was just absolute classic uh, 
TA on the Euro USD at that level. Like uh, aside from the volume profile, which actually really actually is the final nail in the coffin of the Euro there. Um, you had a role reversal zone. You had a 20 moving average. You had everything uh, telling you that the market was probably a, a little bit tired there, but also probably just mm. as importantly, it was a very, very important zone. One to be taking profit from the, the lows that we just uh, talked about previously, but also... Yeah. At a, as a bit of a warning sign that, you know, there's a very strong chance that the reversal is going to happen right there. Um, and I think all the volume profile did there was really confirm what you probably should have already uh, been able to see with your naked eye. And I think having that having that confirmation of the volume profile is actually a really powerful tool to have in your in your toolbox, most definitely. Yeah, to to have to know where the, where the most traded level is, which is always that POC, it's really helpful to define why it's so an important level. See, sometimes in TA, you believe something's important, but it actually isn't. When you have what you believe is important, as Tyrone said, which is a whole bunch of confluence reasons that are technical analysis, moving averages, role reversal, shooting, st shooting stars, whatever it might be. And you also know that that's also been a great traded zone because you can see it with the volume profile. It stacks that confluence. And once you've stacked confluence, then you can you can really start to build that position out. So even for an example, we could take this particular range here and we could say, okay, well, we're interested to know what was most traded from this low over to this high before this whole thing happened. And then you can see here, well, we had a lot of trade between this high and this low. And what you might notice is that that's where the market first finds some, some issues because there were buyers here. You can see them on the charts in terms of they're on the charts, but also that was the most traded range of the previous. So if you were shorting, of course it did go further. I understand that in here could have been a very interesting take profit zone. And also between this high and this low could have been an area where as a scalper, you may have come in and said, well, I know there's nothing here. There's nothing that's going to stop me there, but down here, maybe there is. And there is a reaction yeah. here. It might not be huge, but as a scalper yeah. or day trader, that's still a move. And it's a move that you can yeah. say, I'm going to go and activate my scalping system in that move. Once the level's broken, I'm going to stop and not do anything until I find the next active range. Yeah. So that can be and very helpful to stop you taking crappy trades. Absolutely. And people get a little bit um, yeah, caught up in the fact that, oh, you know, but there could be more in the move or, you know, and sometimes they, they'll take their profit and they'll say, well, you mm -hmm. know, I should have left it in because, you know, it had more in it. You really have to stop thinking like that as a scalper and a day trader. Like if you're, I mean, if you're as a long-term investor, very, very different story, right? If you're buying for yep. the long hold and just not worrying about it, very, very different. But if you're actually actively trading the market, so you're active, not passive, uh, you really don't want to be looking at uh, a move and saying, I should have stayed in it longer because what that's going to do, it's going to affect your judgment for yeah. the next trade. You're going to say, oh, I took it off a little bit early last time and you know, maybe I should leave it in a little bit longer this time because I hate to miss out. That's actually a really, really bad mindset because you know, like Tom said, yes, it did keep going, but what it certainly did there was retest that zone and there was every chance that it may well have completely reversed from that level and gone up. It's a very, very important zone. So what you want to be doing is making sure that you do pay a lot of attention to where the take profit should be and don't get too caught up if the market continues to move in the trades direction because you've gone in and did what you needed to do. You've, you've taken the um, the move, the expected move that you had. Yep. You've taken yep. the, the money out at a very important zone. If it keeps going from there, so be it. Look for the next trade, but do not ever let that affect your next trade thinking you should have left it in longer. Always have faith in your ability. If you understand levels, never be um, sorry that you took it off early because that's really, really bad mindset. So what what I guess Tyrone and I are trying to get at here is, is when you're scalping, when you're day trading, when you're doing any of these things, I like to think of them the same real thing. Basically getting into a trade that you want to be in for less than a couple of days, let's call it that or even just a few minutes if necessary. When you're getting into those, it's important to know the biggest traded zone because let's be frank, we do not see day traders generally or scalping algorithms or I'm sorry, scalping like big bankers. That's just not how it kind of works. They build a position over time. They like a price. Again, we want to be visually able to represent that price. Now, if we have a look at, at this particular chart here and we kind of break down even the tighter ranges of the day, let's say you were coming into this market over here and you were interested to know a little bit more about that market. You could take a volume profile for that range 
And you could say, okay, well, I know that there's been some buying. Oops. There's been some buying between this, this level here and this level here. So I might come in there and say, okay, well, the, generally the trend's been up here on the, let's say, one hour, two hour, et cetera. If we break underneath this, all right, I might be looking for shorts. We're coming from the top down into the session. I'm a scalper. I'm interested in buying this block in here. And I'm very, very interested to seeing how the market reacts to that. Potentially, I want to buy that. Well, as you come across, even though I know the market did end up going shorting off, you then see, oh, it reacts with that value area low and also that POC and it moves up. Now, where would a scalper potentially say, okay, I need to exit my position? Remember, we already know where 70% of the trade is. So most people are going to say, well, I'm going to take the profit off here. Wrong. <laughs> no, we can't take the profit there. That is not necessarily where the market's going to go to. But we do know that 70% is traded within this range. So would it be okay to potentially target in that value area high? Well, at least it would make a lot more sense. So yes, it ends up going higher here, but the better trade exit would have been here. And of course, in this area here would have been your entry. Now, this is a five-minute chart. You could be literally on a tick chart or a 30-second chart. It's an example of what happens into market opens. So Ty, that's one of our favorite things, yeah? Trading the London session and the New York session. Those two opens tend to offer great currency trades and great futures trading, don't they? Absolutely. Uh, it is probably our only um, regret that we're probably not in a time mm. zone or country where that could be right uh, in the hit zone for us to be able to trade during the day, Tom. I reckon um, we're not going to be moving anytime soon, people, but um, it's probably the best trading. It really is. Um, you know, where I guess we, we've got the Asian session uh, throughout the day where, you know, a lot of this, we're, we're always doing a lot of waiting, aren't we? We are waiting for the London Open. We are waiting for the New York Open when we're trading currencies, of course. But um, yes. yeah, a lot of the pure t TA and the really clean action does happen in those zones. There's no question about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, which time frame is best for you? It's important to know the opens and trade the the trades that are going to be best for this. If you're going to use a volume profile, generally you'll want to use the, I believe, the instruments that are for that session. Because if you're going to say like, let's say previous session, you put a volume profile on the previous session, then you say, okay, that was the most traded zone for that point. I'm interested in maybe scalping off that particular point. Well, what's it going to be relevant to? Well, of course, the session opens. So if you're trading the Japanese yen, then you probably need to look at the Asian session. If you're trading the Australian dollar, consider the Asian session. If you're trading the euro, pound, maybe even some of the metals, the biggest exchange is in London. So generally, you would want to trade the London session for that. What about if you trade indices, S&P 500, NASDAQ? That's where it gets painful for me. Probably why I have the panda eyes tie at the moment. <laughs> and that's going to be the US session, which next week, guys, remember daylight savings changes at all. Thank goodness. I'm Tom so is so excited. He is oh, so happy. It's and so he's, bad. He's be, I can't tell you how happier bad. In, in about three weeks, time it actually changes the, the double hour. I, I already need double right now. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, I need it to go 11.30 rather than 1.30 in the morning. It's ridiculous. But look, the, <laughs> the US session the US session's also a great option. But again, trade the instruments if you're going to use volume profile, just makes sense, yeah? You've got to think. And I, I know I didn't always think in the markets, but it, it is logical. Trade the instruments that trade during those times. That tends to give you the best entries, the best exits, the best traps, all of those types of things. So that's mm. that's really important little top tip there. Uh, yeah. Also, some of the trades that you want to start with, use the majors, guys. Uh, there's no reason to go ex you know, exotic and, and wild when you first trade, that tends not to work as technically. You've got to think about the liquidity of something. So always stick with the, the majors if you can. If you start going into some of the other minor kind of currencies or minor stocks, you won't have as much technical edge. So I'm all, Tyron and I are all about, you know, where's our edge? It's generally technical analysis. So therefore, we want to trade things that actually trade off technical analysis, not off fundamental news, et cetera, do we? Yeah, hundred percent. And and just probably a question to the room. Yeah, why does everybody think that you know trading those instruments in the um in those zones uh, is actually the better trading? Can you can you tell us why you think that is? You think it's because? Just tell us why. Let's see what people can come up with. Okay, I'll let the, the room reason. answer. <laughs> there is a re there so, is a reason. 
Yeah, yeah. No, there's always there's always a reason for a lot of things. So with with the volume profile, we've got a question coming in. How do you determine the range, the start and end of the range? Well, the good that's why I've focused on the idea of supply demand ranges or channel ranges, range bound markets basically. It's because it's much easier for you to identify it. That's why I honed in on this area just to prove the point of the session. And you can tell the session wasn't open fully because look with the volume. This is the this is the beginning of the pre kind of market. You can see that volume increasing on the horizontal. I like having both on. So I've got the standard volume on and I've also got, of course, my volume profile on. And what you'll notice is that as it opens, it goes down in, sets the trap, which goes into this direction. You'd probably be scalped out at that point, And then it goes off in the opposite direction. Now, how do I draw it? Well, I'm going from the start in this case of the range to the current area of the range. So that's a great first technique to draw all of the different ones of how we do it. Well, that might take a little while. I'd probably suggest you do our courses, um, which you can, you know, you can get a deal if you're interested in the end of today's session. But basically, yeah, it, it, there's a few different ways to draw them. Uh, the first one, though, range bound markets, horizontals are the easiest. There's no doubt uh, because it's so, you can just see it so visually beautiful. And that's, yep. that's a great thing here. 100%. Yeah, uh, all of you guys can uh, spot, uh, yeah, the original BTC, uh, all correct, 100%. Liquidity, volume, all the good things that make the market move smoothly, 100%. We've also got some questions about the volume profile. Now, I've been a little sneaky. I have actually, it, it, it's look, it's a TradingView uh, platform one that obviously Pepperstone has, TradingView, which is great. Um, now, you will probably need to get pro on trading view to be able to use volume profile they have kind of made it that tool but i think it's so good as a as a you know an extra additional you don't have to use it we're just trying to say this is an advanced technique we've covered supply demand before we've covered a lot of techniques tyron and i are starting to play with you know we're, we're expecting that a lot of you out there are starting to get a little bit more advanced this is just an advanced concept an advanced technique so i, I think it's a, a great one and i think it gives you a lot of edge we're gonna we're gonna Oz, show you the Ozzy tools, yeah. said that yeah, got to and, look, and, and the thing is like. too, yeah, the one thing you've got to remember, guys, is um, when you are a trading, you, you are essentially it's a job, it's not a hobby, right? So never be afraid to you know invest uh, some money or some time into the tools that are going to make your job easier, right? Like a, hmm. a carpenter is not going to try and uh, yeah put a house together without the right tools. Um, and it goes for every industry that you're in, right? This is no different. Like this is a serious business, a very, very serious business. So, you know, you, you've got to look at it like um, it's for the greater good and and don't ever, if it's something that can help you, uh, don't, I'm not saying you won't go and waste money and buy every tool under the sun, but if there's no. something that you can absolutely help you and you know mm -hmm. works for you, it's a small price to pay if it helps you even get one more trade uh, in the right direction than, um, than not, okay? So, it's invest in yourself. It's very, very important. Thomas and I learned that very, very early. Like, yeah, we're talking a long, long time ago. We tried to do it without the the bells and the whistles and the, and all of the um the education. But yeah, we quickly learned that really you have to invest in yourself to be a better version of yourself. And and trading is no different to any other industry. So yeah, if it means giving pro a try for a while and getting all these tools, give it a crack. Because I mean, at the end of the day, we're in a serious business where you know we're not doing a fish and giggles, Thomas. We'll edit that out. <laughs> the word. <laughs> Don't worry. It's all right. Give it a thumbs up. Yeah, guys. Give a thumbs up the video. <laughs> so the three, you know what you know why. The three laws of Wyckoff. I just want to just kind of reiterate this. The easiest way to draw volume profiles will always be the demand equals supply, which is no significant price change and lower volatility, because that's where you'll really see the builds. Another good thing is, let's say you think about this logically. All right, so we've got a market like this. And then the market breaks out of that range. Well, what if it comes back into that range? What are you probably interested in? Well, you might actually be interested in the volume profile level. This is more for a swing trader. Because if you knew the volume profile level, let's say you knew that was the point of control. What if you then came into that zone and said, whoa, you know, this could be a good scalpy level for me. I know that the big trade is like that zone before. What's to say that they didn't like that zone in the future? So again, it gives you extra credibility on zones to target. And these will be areas that you traditionally won't find with support resistance 
with even standard supply demand theory because you won't be able to see them represented on the chart. Instead, you're secretly seeing them using a tool, which is kind of cool. So yeah, this is this is part of Wyckoff, really. I mean, Wyckoff said his laws of demand and supply. The first one was demand equals supply, no significant price change. And obviously, we had moves from these levels, which would happen. And this was effectively demand outstripping supply or demand going less than supply. So price drops. This is standard economic theory. I mean, it happens with everything in life. And that's the beautiful thing about trading. We can apply so many real world encounters and things that we've done in the trading markets. So the last one I just wanted to mention was that basically we need to always consider that the market is the composite man tie. It's so much easier. Composite man man or woman, we'll call it both. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, this is Wyckoff's theory. And we basically, we had... Wyckoff created the idea that traders and investors should consider that the market was being controlled by a single entity. We all know there's hedge funds out there, there's big banks out there, there's just standard transactions, government transactions, trade flow. I mean, this type of stuff that goes into a currency is wild, isn't it, Ty, when you really break it down? I mean, I don't even, it probably boggles my mind. So let's just simplify it. It's all one entity. And we're interested in finding out where they're manipulating price to or they're entering positions. Because you're taught, you kind of start off and you think, well, most fund managers don't beat the S&P 500. A lot of people lose. I don't want to follow them. Well, in some ways that's true. But at the same time, you need to still know where they're setting positions. And as Tyrone mentioned before, a great tip was that we don't trade the type of size that they do. You might trade one lot. You might trade 0.2 lots. You might trade 20 lots you won't be anywhere near most likely the level they're on. They have a problem getting into the markets, which is why they buy like a grid-based system range. And then they get they hone in on a zone that they start entering. You just can't see it without a tool like this. And really that, is, that is our true advantage because um, we are understanding that yeah. gives us the ability to actually, you know, you know, hover in there and actually actually trade the same way, but actually mm-hmm. take advantage of their you know, inability to actually load up on one position in one hit and go. Um, that, that's why these the, these zones actually work out. The fact that they're actually going there to reload is actually our advantage to get either long to get into that zone or actually join the party when it actually gets to that zone. All we've yeah. got to do is actually find that zone. So essentially, this composite man or woman represents the biggest players in the market makers and it allows a trader to better understand how potential market manipulation manifests in price action. So if we have a look here at the Australian dollar the other day, you might notice that the market moves underneath this low down here and wicks through it. Now, that's not always going to happen. But a lot of the time as a scalper and day trader, you'll see these kind of extreme zones. And it's really annoying because often they'll take your stop losses, they'll hunt your stop losses. Anyone out there been had that done to them? And then they suddenly reject. (laughs) And then they go, oh, what just happened? Oh, no. Ah, And it goes the opposite way. Well, this is also a way that you can think about using the volume profile. I mean, at that point, you will know, because of course, if we line up with this, that it's nowhere near the point of control. It's nowhere near the value area high. It's nowhere near the value area low. So effectively, it's in an extreme zone. Now, that doesn't mean that it hasn't broken through, but there's there's ex- extra ways you can think about it. Let's say a low is taken and that low is quickly rejected back through. That could therefore be a scalping system that you apply, especially around market opens or news events. Now, it's a more dangerous technique because, of course, you need to think about where your stop loss is going to be and stuff. But if you were in that, where could be a good take profit from that zone? Potentially the value area, the POC. So the value area low or the POC. So again, we're just using the volume profile to statistically stack some zones that we believe the market you know, might come back to during those periods. And if you actually pull it across, we keep pulling it across, what you might notice, whoops, is that when you go underneath this time, see where market comes back to? So it rallies underneath and it comes back just on that value area low level, which also turns out to be a support becomes resistance zone, stacking a zone, confluence, it's always good. And that's where would be an ex- excellent kind of like, okay, that was that was scary. Maybe I was in it. Um, but, you know, it's time for me to bail to get your kind of proofing of numbers. 
So um, that's just a good way to do it there. Now, we'll hand it over to some questions, Ty, I think at this stage. Today was all about understanding how markets flow in. It's more of an advanced technique using volume profiles within ranges markets. If you like this stuff, let us know. Um, but do feel free to ask any questions now and uh, we'll answer them. And also do remember, if you're interested in finding out more about some of these things, we do have um, a 25% off special on our website. It literally, this particular course, the Scalping Masterclass is based on this concept, supply demand, support resistance, understanding confluence, stacking six or seven or 10 different reasons together is, but all separate and then applying that onto the charts. So if you like kind of some of the things that you're seeing, you want to get those higher risk reward style trades going on, uh, this is something that we do do. But we'll hand it over. And remember, go check out the Pareto principle if you're interested. I, I think it's pretty cool. Hey, it's cool, Ty. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys think that today's session was interesting and you learned a lot here, uh, you should see what is behind the curtain in the um, the Advanced Scalping mm -hmm. Masterclass because it like, basically takes that to about uh, 17 or 18 different levels. Um, and when it all comes together, uh, you, you'd actually wonder how you did without it, to be truthful. So it's a very, very powerful concept. And actually, on uh, more exciting news, um, we've been working very closely with uh, Pepperstone to uh, really come up with a plan for the coming year. And we're going to be coming at you a lot more frequently with these webinars. So um, stay tuned for some more announcements but they're going to be yeah uh, yeah very very exciting things happening uh with, with us and pepperstone and we're going to be bringing you a lot more content um in the coming months so you keep an eye on that because i know you do pop popular demand uh we're very very happy and thankful that you guys give us your time uh on a fortnightly Absolutely. basis but now we're going to be bringing you even more so uh you've asked for it and um yeah one thing that pepperstone and us try to do is actually uh, give you as much um value as possible we do fully appreciate uh, that you're giving us your um very important time and we want to obviously maximize that so yeah stay tuned for that because there will be announcements coming shortly so we've got some questions coming in here, Ty. The first one is, can you explain the volume profile when price trends further in extremes or is it time limited? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, price will will vol will go out to extremes. Sometimes it will be, it'll be a break where it'll actually be a real breakout of that range. So of course, markets don't always remain range bound. Generally, it takes news. So in the previous 24 hours, we saw... Mr. Jerome Powell come out of the Federal Reserve, the most important central bank. And he basically was like, we'll just push rates and you can't stop us, <laughs> to uh -huh. paraphrase. Uh, but, but effectively, he said, we'll have to raise, we may need to raise uh, faster and harder than we thought. And that pushed into that narrative 50 basis points in March. That meant that we were allowed to break a range because all of a sudden the market hadn't had that priced in. So we broke the range and obviously went to, you know, negative connotations, strong for the US dollar, which because we're raising rates, the US dollar's in more demand, get higher money in the term deposits, literally, that's the fundamentals behind it pretty much. And then, and then it, it thrashed all of the currencies around the world that weren't US dollar. So basically, that, that, that's the crux of the fundamental side. Once it breaks out that way, to answer the question, it's not coming back generally, at least anytime soon, because it'll, it'll go off to the next level of equilibrium which is something we teach in this course. The other answer to it is when we're talking about um, in moving into an extreme zone, you also want to be looking at the left-hand side to see whether that extreme zone was a previous supply or demand level or there's another stack on that. Because actually extreme zone scalp trading is one of the best ways to do it with take profits at the most traded zone. Yeah, that's that's one of the ways we love, we love doing that. Very, very good. Right. Okay. Uh, Ken brings up a point that we're missing the E from Pepperstone and the code won't work without it. I, I believe you're right, Ken. Uh, oh. It's very possible. So, um, yeah. Is this is this, is this uh, one of the codes that we, we made there, Ty? Yeah. I think <laughs> right. add, is add, is the, it actually used in that? <laughs> no, I think, I think you have to add the E. I add, do believe you have the, to add the E. Yeah, you, you do. That's you all do. right. I've got, a, yeah. I've got another one I can give, give everybody uh -huh. if they are interested. Right. Um, Ryu uh, says scalping has a bad rep among many groups. Why would someone mm. do scalping rather than longer positions? Ryu, the problem with scalping uh, and the consensus around it is it can be considered a little bit gamblish if you are not knowing what you're doing. Like people go in and out, they're looking for that instant gratification. And a lot of people actually go in there thinking that you don't need to know as much about it because you are actually, you know, say, say for instance, someone might apply uh, a moving average strategy on a really small time frame or even a stochastic 
indicator and say, we're just going to buy here and we're going to sell there. Um, and it, it sometimes adopts a gambling mentality. And that's why a lot of people frown upon it and say, well, it's already, you know, it is very uh, dubious. But look, when you know what you're doing and when you really, really understand what the markets are doing, it does mm -hmm. make a very, very big difference too. Because the thing is, right, I understand what you're saying about longer term positions and there's nothing uh, wrong with doing both. We encourage actually to do what trading, um, you know, method suits you best and suits your lifestyle best. But when you can do long-term investing and you can do scalping in between, you're really capturing and cornering how much yeah. uh, you can actually make out of the market because you're really giving yourself an opportunity to trade every environment. There are going to be a lot of times when the market's going sideways, 70% uh, of the year, uh, actually on average, where if you're taking longer-term positions, you could be sitting there for a very long time uh, and not really driving anything from the market. So being able to scalp and being agile in smaller timeframes and understanding it gives you the opportunity to actually extricate a lot more value from your time that you're investing in the market. And it gives you a, a broader range of uh, the ability to actually generate more income. So yes, it, ha it, it, ha it has a bad name. You know, so does options trading, but options trading is one of the safest investment vehicles there is. So it really is just about understanding correctly. the instrument. <laughs> if done correctly, 100%. Yeah. And scalping is yeah. the same. When you scalp correctly, uh, it can be some of the easiest ways to actually uh, get into the market. But done incorrectly, it absolutely has uh, a gambler's fallacy and connotation. So you've got to be really careful. But you need to most importantly understand what you're doing and not just have a, a bit of a guess on a Friday afternoon looking for the weekend yeah. income. And, and this is this is the thing. You don't want it just because the trend, let's say you see a trend. So this is a problem with a lot of people is they see like a downward slope and they say, well, I've got to, I'm just going to short it. I'm just going to short. I'm going to scalp short. I'm going to scalp short. And they're right for that period of time while the market's trending. Then mm -hmm. the market goes sideways and they get absolutely slaughtered yep. because they and think they, and, everything's and, a new trend. Exactly. And that's not And they end true. up giving more back. They give it, they give it yeah. back and then some. Yeah. So that's why you have to start thinking. I mean, scalping can be dangerous if you're not willing, if you're not really understanding when markets actually will hit an equilibrium yep. zone and start to range bound. Uh, the other thing is that I, I consider scalping anything from a few minutes to potentially even a day or two. So yeah. a lot of people, that's day trading scalping to me. And that's what we actually mm -hmm. teach all of it because yeah. it's all, it's just about finding statistical edge. And if you have a statistical edge, then you're going to do a lot better. Hundred. All right. You've, 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 got to, you've got to learn. Look, yeah, crossing the road can be dangerous if you don't know how to look left and right. Uh, and it's no different with scalping. You don't want to run across a four-lane highway. <laughs> so that's probably not good either. All right. Well, um, look, from all of us here at Pepperstone, thank you so much for, of course, uh, following, watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, and let Pepperstone know, of course. It's always important that they know uh, what you are enjoying. But, yeah, we'll see you in, I think, probably about two weeks' time for now. But we, we hope to start doing these, I think, a lot more, aren't we, Ty? So we're going to make yeah. it more of a weekly thing so that you can come in here, hang out with us, We'll chat about content. We'll obviously give you new educational concepts around scalping swing and day trading and maybe even do a little bit of you know the the longer term stuff past that. But but realistically, it's all about what you guys need and whether it gives you value. And we appreciate your time. So thank you for being here. We'll catch you next Thanks time. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good night. Thank you.